What's up guys, my name is Jack. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to do the TV glitch warp effect in After Effects CC 2018. Basically, the effect is featured behind me. I'm not entirely sure how, how well you can see it. Pretty much, it is how you can actually do a glitch effect to either the background or the actual person um, themselves or the object themselves. Definitely a really, really nice, subtle effect and is really super easy once it's broken down. Without further ado, let's get into the TV glitch warp effect in After Effects 2018. All right, check it. So this right here is gonna be the clip that we are gonna be actually applying this particular effect to. Now, uh, this is actually going to be using the Roto Brush. I've done a few other tutorials using the Roto Brush before. I don't even need my headset on, to be fair. This isn't even gonna have any audio, I don't think. Um, but basically the Roto Brush, usually you have to be pretty specific with it, pretty tight, pretty clean with it, take your time overall with, uh, with the effect. However, with today's effect, it doesn't have to be the most precise thing in the entire world. Honestly, um, you can't even really notice, even if you spend loads of time doing it perfectly precise, it still is gonna look pretty much similar um, to if you kinda just did a rough version of this effect. So, without further ado, let me show you this TV glitch effect. So, what I wanna do, right, is you see, so this particular clip right here is a clip I recorded of the rapper Future, hip hop, uh, hip hop artist, right? I recorded him up in London a few months ago. And basically I want to apply this effect when he goes up to actually rap into the mic and then when he comes back down, the effect stops. So a nice little quick one, right? So basically with the roto brush, I'm going to have to kind of highlight uh, Future to make him separate from the background so we can actually either do this Twitch glitch effect to the background or to him himself. So first off, what I want to do is go ahead and duplicate this clip. So Control D or Command D if you're on the Mac. Um, then let's go ahead and figure out where we want this to start. So it looks like, boom, right there he starts reaching his hand up. So let's go ahead and start it right here, right where the first piece of movement happens. He goes up, wraps, and then comes back down, right? So let's go ahead and just isolate this little area right here. Boom. Just like that, that is going to be the little area that we are going to do this effect to. And then honestly, maybe even we keep it going there or mm, we can see about that in a second. But for now, all I want to do right now is just actually apply and start applying this effect to this little section right here. Okay, boom. So once you've actually duplicated your clip, go up here to the Roto Brush tool and double click your selection where you're actually gonna want this particular effect featured. And if you've watched any of my Roto Brush tutorials before, super simple, just go ahead and start highlighting whatever you want to apply this effect to, right? So if you wanna apply this to your uh, to, to your sports edit or whatever of, of someone kicking the ball or you want to apply it to like a skateboarding thing or, or a rap video like like this or, or a club video or basically whatever start highlighting your uh, Your subject matter right what you kind of want this effect to revolve around you see I've done a basic mask right here a basic roto brush to future and overall you can still see though that it's not good right N no part of this is good but lucky for us uh this effect is only on for about a second and a half right so we don't really actually have to go too specific in depth you see if we really zoomed in here some of these lines aren't correct um obviously it all looks a little bit sloppy however this effect is on for so long and it's such a glitchy effect that um, us doing this kind of sloppy even kind of complements the effect later on and, and, and you'll see that down the road But once we've done this first mask, just go ahead and press play on your keyboard Jesus and <laughs> It looks like because this is the club the lights in the background are changing so much I'm not gonna have any luck with Roto brush actually figuring out um, and following uh, my mask because usually uh, Say the background was completely white and then future was wrapping there where the background was completely different color, right? Um, then the subject matter that you're trying to capture it would be super easy to capture the subject matter because it is so different to the background however here the lighting is constantly changing because of this strobe light in the background you see so it throws the roto brush off so i believe we are going to have to go through frame by frame and actually uh and, and actually highlight him every single frame but still it's much quicker than doing a full mask right which would be the alternate version of how you would essentially do this effect right here um and you really just 
um, uh, have to do this if After Effects is going to be a bit annoying with you. Um, like I said, if your effect is lighter um, and more clear, um, if your clip rather is, is lighter and more clear, then by all means you probably won't have to frame by frame it like this and it will do an alright job of figuring out. You see right there it just goes crazy as soon as I start playing it. But yeah, yeah, this, this like I said is literally just because I'm in the club and the camera doesn't really know what's going on with all the different lights and uh, everything's kind of changing. But go ahead and just pretty much do a basic mask. I'm going to run through this. Um, I might keep it on the screen or I might just speed it up for you guys. I'll, honestly, I'll see what I'm thinking in editing. frame or so this is <laughs> honestly the most time consuming process even even if the um the mask doesn't even have to be too perfect still because this uh this is in the club honestly like i just said before the light behind has completely screwed up um getting a good shot or it's it still is a good shot but it's it's uh the uh the computer can't really figure out where the kind of outline of future begins and ends because the strobe keeps going on and off. So I have had to manually do this. Hopefully your clip worked out a little bit easier for you than mine, but oh well, gotta get it out of the way, get the tutorial done and boom, that right there is future completely masked off. So now if we simply go and turn off the bottom layer and play that, that will just be future in a poor kind of shitty glitchy looking mask, you see? Super simple, nice and uh, nice and simple, right? Kind of looks pretty funny, does not look very good at all. Obviously, if we turn this on, um, you can't even notice. Now, what we want to do, right, is clearly here we have now created a roto brush, right? This is very, very interesting because this invert right here is all we have to do pretty much to defer between glitching future or glitching the background. But I won't show you that first. I'll show you obviously how to set up the glitch first. Go up here. To effects, go ahead and type wave, throw your wave warp on this top clip. Instantly you start seeing that start screwing up future. Then go ahead down to turbulent displace. Go ahead and grab turbulent displace, put that on your clip as well. So instantly look at future. He is looking jokes. Let me just put that to full so you kind of get a good idea. Instantly he's looking pretty wavy, pretty screwed up. I'm gonna put that back down the quarter while we do the effect. The way we're going to want to actually implement, uh, implement this effect is by going up to wave warp first. Go ahead and change the wave type to noise. Boom. And uh, go ahead and put the wave width on 500. 500. Nice. Very, 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 very nice indeed. Go ahead and press the amount of the turbulent displace to zero. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll leave the turbulent displace for a minute. My bad. I should focus just on the wave warp first. So first off, wave height. Go ahead and put the wave height to zero. Make a keyframe at the very beginning of your selection that you want this effect to start coming in on. So make that key point, um, that keyframe right there at the beginning. Then come to around the middle of your um, of your selection where you want this effect to take place. Go ahead and put the wave height on 50, and then come sort of close to the end, right right at the end. Go ahead and pop that back down to zero. Nice, boom. Nice and simple. In terms of the wave warp, that is it done right there. Then come down here to Turbulent Displace and literally just go ahead and put the Evolution on three. Boom. And that right there, guys, is essentially the effect done and dusted. Let me go ahead and show you how this plays out so far. So right there, right? Hold tight. Clearly, Future goes up, he glitches out, and the, the, the mic comes back down and he is not glitched. But like I just told you a second ago, the only thing that defers um, this, this glitch effect being on the subject matter that you highlighted or everything around it is simply ticking this box called invert foreground slash background. So let's see what happens if we click this. Boom, if we click it now, future or whatever your subject matter is going to be the thing in focus while everything behind him is glitching out. If this doesn't make sense to you, let me just go ahead and turn off I'm gonna turn off the bottom layer. Basically, this right here, um, the invert means that 
um, basically either just what we selected is highlighted or everything around what we selected is highlighted and what we um, highlighted is cut out, right? So if we do this, future would just be a silhouette. However, we put the unedited um, duplicate layer below it. So of course it looks like the background glitches out, which um, looks absolutely awesome. Personally, I prefer it when uh, the glitch effect is on the background and not on the actual um, person himself or object, whatever. Look at that, that looks absolutely dope. Everything around future glitches out. And as you see, the mask that we did really wasn't good with the rotor brush. It was very basic, very simple, by far not professional at all. However, when we actually look at this effect now, that looks absolutely awesome, very cool. And future does indeed look like he is absolutely not glitched out at all. And everything around him seems to be glitched out including this guy with the gang gang t-shirt and all the chains and shit like that. But <laughs> overall, I think that's absolutely dope. Damn, man, that, that, that definitely looks sick. Um, it did take quite a while to do the roto brush, um, even though it was basic. But like I said, that really depends on the, uh, the lights and stuff like that that you're dealing with. If you just have consistent smooth lighting, like a regular video shoot would, um, you won't really run into that problem of really having to just get a, a lot of annoyance out of the roto brush. But like I said, I was in the club filming, so the, the strobe lights and everything like that really screw up the light um, um, in, in the camera. The camera really doesn't even know what's going on. Neither does the editor, but boom, that right there is the effect, guys. Thank you guys for watching another video. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for making it to the end. If you uh, learned something, again, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm pretty tired today, I can't even lie. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day and goodbye.